Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Cummins and if you don't know who I am, I am basically heading up and leading the project which is Natoriu, which is a samurai school of war and we're going to bring about the 1600s teaching of a man called Natori Masazumi. He was around in the 17th century and we're going to bring his teachings together and put them out in English. However, uh, I've had a few questions from different people and I've also had questions from people who've had fears from other people and it's sort of this grapevine attitude of, of what's going on, what's Anthony really up to. So I'd like today to talk to you about the fears about joining Natoriu or associating with Natoriu or what is the future of Natoriu. Before I do that, let me tell you a bit, little bit about where I've come from and what my plans are. Now I've always been interested in the ninja and in samurai but as I got older and as I had done my education at university and my postgraduate education, I started to think something's not quite right here with the samurai and the ninja. Now I don't think everything is wrong, please don't misunderstand me. I truly believe there's lots of good information out there on the samurai. But I also think it's been distorted. Much of what we have in English in translation is a very, very select amount of documents and they have a certain slant. Most of the documents are about Bushido and um, uh, the way a samurai should act. So most of our Western understanding has come from a very, very select few documents. Like, for example, the book Bushido, which is about the samurai ethical code, which wasn't even written in Japanese. It was written in the 1900s or in, I think, around 1900 in English originally, uh, which doesn't make it wrong. It just means because it's so popular, we have a post-samurai view about what samurai should be. And there's lots of mistakes about the ninja. Now, what I wanted to do and seriously want to do is correct that information. Now, as I say, it's not wholly incorrect, but I want to come on. I want this decade to be a new wave of information. I want from the year 2010 up until 2020 to be where we rethink the samurai. We get a new wave of information and I want you to join me. And the way I'm going to do this is through asking the samurai what they did. And the best person and the best documents I've ever found on this are by Natori Masazumi. Now Natori is the author of uh, the Shoninki, one of the three great ninja manuals, which in itself is a little bit of a, a bad concept. But what we do have, that's led us onto this big collection of scrolls Natori wrote, about 25 to 30 in, in average. Um, and he wrote from beginning to end of samurai teachings uh, and tactics and military ways. So I want to produce that, and it is being produced, the first book is coming out soon, in English for everyone to be able to read. So that they can correct the samurai and help me on this mission of correction. So it's a bit of a duty for all of us. It's your duty, it's my duty, anybody who feels they have a connection, uh, and, and if you're watching this video you probably do, if you feel you have a heartfelt connection to the samurai or to the ninja, you need to put aside your personal worries and get on with getting the correct information out. That's a big, big issue. So make sure you check your decision and think, am I making the decision through personal ego or am I actually trying to benefit the world of history and benefit myself, bring about some new change and some good things in my life? So the first question I get, or a lot of the questions I get is, is Natori role playing or is it just role playing? Uh, and what I mean by that is some, some white western people are going to dress up in samurai uniforms and pretend to be samurai and have a jolly good time about it. We have to be very, very careful here because um, I would say that most of it has an element of role play. No matter which samurai school you're from, no matter which Viking reenactment group you're from, no matter knights, no matter what it is, we are not knights, we are not samurai, and, and we are not Vikings. But, but people do get involved with that and take it very seriously. Now, of course, you have people who are pure, pure out reenactors. They say we are a reenactment group. And I would say for reenactment, uh, that is educational. It's usually its aim is educational. Role players, they actually have a entertainment value. They do it for entertainment, to go into a fantasy world, to pretend to be a World War I soldier, or to pretend to be a samurai. They have that idea of entertainment. Of course, those two mix quite a lot. 
However, there's that small group of people who seriously study the samurai ways, or they seriously study Viking ways, and they have become excellent at it. If you look at the Western martial arts tradition, there are lots of amazing people who are doing really good work there, and they're really getting to grips with what it was like to be a Western knight, and they're pushing it forward. So the question is, is it role playing? Is it reenactment? Or is it real? You know, is it a reality? Now, of course, my answer to this question is that all depends on the student. So, is Natoru reenactment? Yes, I would say it is. Is it role playing? Is it entertainment? I would say no. Only if you bring it, uh, bring an entertainment element to it. It is, in fact, self development. And I'd like to talk to you about that now. So, as I said, reenactment is education, role play is entertainment. But then you get self development. Most people, uh, so so in history, you can be either born into a very important period, which becomes uh, popular throughout all of time. For example, ancient Greece, the Spartans, uh, World War One, World War Two. You can be uh, from a samurai. You can be born into Vikings, a Zulu warrior. Whatever it is, some people are born into those times when they have. A situation around them where they don't need to fantasize. There's no need. Their life is quite difficult, or their life is quite fulfilling. So, you, so for example, Natori was born as a samurai. He was not in the warring periods. He didn't go to war, but he was born as a samurai, which meant he got paid from birth to be a samurai. And when he came of age, he served the clan, and they gave him enough money. He had a house, and he simply created had lots to do with his time. He was a samurai. There was no need for him to fantasize about anything else, apart from maybe the warring days. But of course, most of us in our modern lives uh, are not in the army. We, we're not f are fighting terrorism. We don't have something centralized that occupies our mind. So we find something to improve ourselves with. Some people paint. Some people do calligraphy. Some people do theater. Of course, you then got those people who don't do anything. They just go drinking and playing computer games. But you do get a and probably people like you are the people here who are trying to find something. So some people want to improve themselves, but they have to find a medium to do it with. Most people, as I say, don't go down the history medium. They go down the, I don't know, yoga or, you know, um, some sort of exercise or, or they do something or philosophy students or people get involved in, um, you know, philosophical arguments. But you've come here because you've chosen samurai. You could have chosen Viking, you could have chosen Zulu, as I said, you could have chosen any Native American Indian, you, but you're here because you love samurai. And there's something in your heart that says, I love samurai. So you've arrived at the right place and, and that's where I am. So something in my heart says, ninjas, samurai. Of course, I'm never going to be a samurai, and you're never going to be a samurai. That's impossible. We're never going to be ninjas. But we can improve our lives by dealing with samurai and ninjas. That, that's what Natoru is about. So what do I mean by self-promotion? Um, what I mean by that is self-correction, self-promotion, self-help, whichever terminology or buzzword you want to use. What I mean is that if you do it for reenactment, you do it for education of other people. If you do it for role play, you do it for your own entertainment. But if you do it for um, improvement, self improvement, what you'll find is that you study something. No matter what it is, you study it. And when you study it, you improve yourself. So if you come into Natura Ryu with that attitude, that it's self improvement, you will come in and you'll be a sharper person. Your mind will be more focused. You'll be healthier. You'll have a be you'll better flexibility, better uh, muscle, better strength. You'll also be able to think critically. You'll also have a better idea of defending you and your family. You'll also have a much better idea about how the world works. And even better than that, you'll interact better with people socially. You will look at people, you will interact with people, and you'll become better at talking to people. Just simply because of the way you have approached Natura Ryu. You've not done it for um, education, you've not done it for entertainment, you've done it for self-improvement. So is Natori role-playing? That choice is up to you. If you come and you want to educate everyone, you're a reenactor. If you come and you just want to have fun, you're a role-player. If you come and want to improve yourself, you're a student of Natori. You're a personal student of Natori Masazumi. The other question I get is, is it a cult and is Anthony going to build a cult and will he be like a cult leader after power? Um, 
Of course, I'm going to be obvious, or honest, everybody in the world loves power, everybody in the world loves money, and everybody in the world loves prestige. They are just things that everybody loves. Uh, some people can stay away from them, but that's very difficult, or some people are naturally enlightened enough, if you will, that they do stay away from them, but it's very rare and very few and far between. I am genuinely shocked and surprised that it's taken me, someone who doesn't speak Japanese, and I've gone across to Japan and put this team together, and I am bringing this information out for everyone. And um, simply put, it's like, I'm so surprised it's me. I have not tried to put myself in this leadership position. But of course, as time has gone on, people have uh, put me in the sort of their own position. Like, I, they've come across my work and they've said, okay, I trust Anthony and Yoshi. That's where they go in my mind. Some people have said, no, no, you know, he's said against us. We're going to put it down there. We don't trust him. Now, that's fine. I have not put myself in any position. I've simply produced the work and I produce these videos and I've produced hundreds of videos because I want to genuinely share my findings with you. So, am I creating a cult? Is Natori a cult? I would say no. It's obviously, you know, not going to be a cult. It's going to be, hopefully, if my plan goes well, a group of like-minded people coming together who will do it not for recreation, uh, not for education and not simply for entertainment, even though that will be a small part of it. They're doing it for mutual self-improvement and for friendships and bonds. If I'd like to break away from my author face at the moment and sort of give you the less professional, if you want to look inside what I want, I've always liked the idea of a band of brothers or a band of men. And I say men is simply because I quite like it. It doesn't exclude women. Women are more than um, welcome. But I personally like the idea of a group of lads getting together and really enjoying something a bit, you know, military-esque, something a bit masculine, and they are happy to engage with each other and just spend some time improving themselves, but improving friendships and bonds. I am very much an advocate of building um, bonds between men and building bonds between groups and let making sure that you have a solid idea of friendship. You think if I'm in trouble my friend here will help me, my Natori buddy will help me. I have had that in different organisations in the past. I've had great friendships with men there and, and of course you get your friendships with your girlfriends and you get your um, romantic relationships with your girlfriend but it, there's something about having a group of ten or so lads who are friends with you, who'll turn up in times of need and I've been in a situation where I've broke down or somebody else has broke down and we've all turned up, like four cars have turned up to help this person, even though there's only one needed, because they were part of your, your brotherhood. So no, I don't want to produce a cult, but I would love to produce a brotherhood. A, a people who are, you know, I've obviously bought, bought this top because it's crimson it's just a top I go out in in the normal time, but I've bought it because it means Natoru colours to me, and I want other people to have that feeling so that when they come together they fight they've got some sort of I'm gonna say uniform for lack of a better word but they feel a unity together and, and I, that's what I'm trying to promote I'm trying to promote unity and I want you to feel as on an equal footing with me that we're all under Natori Masazumi Sensei's leadership he's dead he's gone he can't say anything anymore but the, the amazing thing about human culture and civilization is writing. What he wrote down over 300 years ago, we can read. We can physically read his words. His students left us information, we can physically read their words. How amazing is that, that you and I can be personal students of Natori Masazumi. He doesn't know we exist, he never knew it was going to be. But Natori knew that after him, his students would read the manuals. That's why he wrote them. Natori didn't write them so that in his lifetime they can be remembered. He could simply teach the information and be, you know, of a high social status because of the information. But he wrote them because he knew they, they left a legacy. He wanted a legacy. And this is that legacy. So do you want to be part of Natori Masazumi's legacy? That's up to you. If the answer is yes, there's no problem. Not a problem. So who is the head of Natoriyu? Who is the, the leader of Natoriyu? If you're going to go into Japanese terminology like Soke, uh, meaning head or grandmaster, then we have to be very careful. There is no continuity between Natoriyu when it ended and my version of Natoriyu. And I say my version of Natoriyu because I'm the person who's gone and made it a reality. There is no continuity. So I cannot be a grandmaster. I cannot be called Soke or... 
uh, anything like that. That's that's not uh, any Japanese title. That's not what I do. That's not what I've done. So when you say, is Anthony like a soke or is he the head? No, I am not a direct descendant. I do not have direct transmission of Nato Ryu. I can never be that. But what I am is I am an Englishman who's gone out to Japan, formed a team, visited the original family, got the five me and Yoshi found the grave we found like got the support of the monk and the the uh, temple and we've got all of the material together we've translated it and we've put it into the world and it's in the english language or coming out in the english language what does that mean it means that of anyone in the world i have the right to claim project leadership I am the leader of the project. I'm not a Soke, I have no Japanese title, I'm not a grandmaster, but I'm a project leader. Nobody can deny that simply for the fact that I have done it. It's my face on everything, it's my name on everything, and Yoshie is uh, an equal partner in this. So we are doing it so that you can read it and that I can read it and that we can bring Natori's teachings back from the past. So the question is raised, if you join Natoryu, are you an underling of Anthony Cummins? You know, do you have to, you know, bow to Anthony Cummins? Is Anthony Cummins suddenly going to get this ego complex and go off on a big maniac sort of spree? No, that's totally not the case. To give you a visual idea, if we were all to line up in a dojo and bow at the, uh, the altar, I would be in the queue with everyone else. I wouldn't even be at the head, I'd be right at the bottom end because I don't class myself as knowing that much. I don't even like that type of system. I would not be the person at the front being bowed to. That is not what I can command. The respect I can command is the respect of effort. I've put a lot of effort and a lot of money into this project to get it out there. And in fact, I've sunk a lot of cash into this and I've sunk more than that, I've sunk time and effort. I've sunk about four or five years so far into this project and it's just starting to get off the ground now. So what respect do I deserve? Probably the respect of people who say, okay, he got off his bum, he went and did it and we are going to read the stuff. I can never be the Grand Master. So for you, if you're choosing to be a Natoru student, you have to remember this. You are never under me. However, what I do do is set the structure of the system. I am the project leader. So even if you become more specialised than him, even if you know Naturu backwards, we just have to remember there's got to be a focal point at the top who says, okay, we should do that, we shouldn't do this, this is the sh direction we should go in. But that doesn't stop you becoming an amazing student. And all it means is the fact that the reward I get is the fact I become project leader simply because I have led the project. It is not a title given to me, to me by anyone. It is not a title I have acquired or bought. It's simply something I have done. I have led the project. It's as simple as that. So are you a, what, what are you a student of? Who are you a student of? You, if you follow Natori Masazumi's teachings, are a direct student of Natori Masazumi. Why? Because it's his words. He wrote those words down for future people to read. Now, he imagined they would be Japanese, but I can pretty much guarantee you, I, I would stake out that if Natori Masazumi came back from the dead and saw everyone all over following his teachings, I don't think there's any human on this planet who would find that bad. I honestly, honestly think he thought in his head he was writing for prosperity, he was writing to save the culture. Because it was being lost at the time, you've got to realise Natori, not only was he really, really close to the Lord, he was telling us that actually people are starting to get samurai teachings wrong. That's samurai. He said himself in the scrolls, samurai are starting to misunderstand samurai teachings. Without war to keep the teachings going, the samurai are losing their way. So he wrote it down to make sure it's correct. So who are you a student of? You are a student of Natori Sanjuro Masazumi. You know why? Because you are reading his words. Yes, they're translated. Yes, they're in your language, but that's irrelevant. You should just trust the translation we've done. No translation is 100% perfect, but it's definitely up the 90 odd percent perfect, meaning you get most, if not all of his teachings there. You'll get 95, 99, 98% of it correct, or whatever the, the actual number is. You will be getting a massive volume correct. And maybe there's a small bit where we think, is it this, is it that, are we getting it wrong? The difference, the point is, is that you can read Natori's words and you can be his student. You can be there. That's your choice.
So when you're discussing me or seeing me, you need to see me, now we've got to be careful with the words we use, you need to see me as either a project leader, a secretary, a chairman, or a, a, I quite like the term warden, or you know, that, that type of thing, somebody who looks after a system that's in place. So the warden of a garden, the garden is there, you can go in the garden, you don't talk to the warden to get the beauty of the garden, you don't think I'm going to the garden to see the warden, you go into the garden to see the garden, to see the beautiful trees. The warden makes sure you don't drip, drop litter, he makes sure you're not ripping up branches, he makes sure every, all the gardeners have cleaned and made sure it's correct, that's what a warden does. So that is my job, I I'm the warden of Natoriu. I'm the project leader. I will make sure people don't go crazy with that. I'll be like, oh, hold on a minute. That's not what the teaching says. Let, let's pull that back. It's already happened. I've had people send me videos of things that they've just made up. And I have to say, even though it's quite embarrassing for me, I have to say, I'm sorry, I, your effort is very good, but that's just not correct. That's not what Natoriu is. So remember, you are a student of Natori Masazumi. I am the warden of the, 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 the landscape, if you will. Why should I leave my school? So why should you leave a school that you're already a part of and join a school run or led by, you know, uh, an Englishman? The simple fact is this, you don't have to leave your school. One of the big, big issues I've heard on the grapevine is people saying, oh, I don't want to leave Anthony. What if Natoriu doesn't work out? Or, or what if I don't like it? Or what if this? You don't have to. Natori Ryu originally is a gungaku school. It is the foundation that everything else should be placed upon. I've said this in many videos. It's like the web, the foundation. Natoriu is underneath everything. On top of that goes your physical samurai training. It's very difficult to explain what Natoriu is unless you've read Natoriu manuals. It's absolutely eclectic and full of different things. It's because it's exactly what all the samurai need. So, if you're a member of a traditional sword school, there is no reason for you to leave that. If you're a member of a school or an organisation out there that does Japanese martial arts or Japanese things, you don't have to leave them in the slightest. Natoriu is perfectly designed for you to adopt it and fit it into your training. Of course you have to keep Natoriu separate, but not separate in that it's divided one side of this, one for the other. It's simply separate the other way. Natoriu is a blanket that goes underneath. And if you want a, another garden reference, the picnic in the garden, the, the blanket is Natori Ryu. The different dishes on the blanket, the sandwiches, the jelly, the sort of the peanut butter, if you will, and the, the uh, um, yogurt or strawberries, whatever's there, that's the actual teachings of physical samurai. So one of them is swordsmanship. One of them is archery. One of them is horse riding. One of them is spearmanship. One of them is nautical or military aquatic training. That's the point. Natoriu is the blanket underneath it. So you do not need to leave your school. No matter what school it is, you don't need to leave it. You can simply be a part of Natoriu and your own school. It's not a problem. The only decision you have to make is which one you put to the forefront. Almost Everyone in the samurai enthusiast community does not, uh, you know, go blank. They always have a crest on, or they always have, you know, something on their bag saying the school they're from, or they always have the poster or the, the, the letter or certificate from their school with the school name. Your only choice is which school do you put at the front. Do you don the crimson kimono with the black hakama and the, the black obi, and do you become a Natoriu student in public? as in you you're physically look like a Natoriu student, or do you don the uniform of your other school and just keep Natoriu in the background? That is your choice. You can switch between the two. It's totally up to you. So that is for you to decide. Is Natoriu the number one school for you, or is your other school above Natoriu, and that's your auxiliary school? That is for you and you only. So duty. What you have to realise is that Japanese samurai culture is very much based on ancestor worship. Your family, your ancestors are the ones you dedicate yourself to, sometimes more than living, which is a little bit strange. However, what that means is that I think we have a duty to make sure Natori's teachings get out there and get taught correctly. Now, I think... Um, 
it's my job. I take it personally. Again, removing my professional face, my personal face is there's something in my heart that says, I have to do this. I totally have to get Natori back on track. I don't know why I picked Natori from an emotional level that I could have picked Fujibayashi, I could have picked Chikamatsu, I could have picked many, many things, but it was simply Natori is there. There's no question for me, there never was a question of which school. Natori, from day one, I just saw it, I thought it was amazing. And now I've seen more of it, I think it's truly amazing. Now we have everything, that is it. So my duty is to make sure that we get samurai um, culture correct. Now, some people may find that strange because I often go against the Japanese way, but actually, uh, not the Japanese don't know everything and modern Japanese do quite a lot get it wrong and I'm not saying I know it right but what I'm saying is we've got Natori's words which tell us exactly what they did and they counteramand some of the modern Japanese people sorry counteract so I trust so the question is, is who do I trust more do I trust a modern Japanese scholar to tell me about what a samurai did or do I trust the samurai to tell me now there's a big debate about that but which I won't go into but on the whole, if you're talking about what goes on around the samurai who was alive at his time, in his area, he knows more than the scholar. He is the man that is doing the job, and he will always come up trumped. So for me, and, and for you hopefully, when you read Natori's works, you'll think, yes, that doesn't quite gel with what we think the samurai are, so, so I'm going to adapt and teach and show everyone else. This is where the reenactment comes in, the education. The entertainment comes in, because we have a bit of fun doing it. But on the whole, overall, it should be self-improvement, with helping to re-educate the people about samurai life. Now, in addition to this, uh, and what makes it really good for me, is that I've tracked down the original Natori family. Now, these people did not know about Natori Yu simply because their family had lost the tradition. The tradition was closed down at the end of the Meiji period. And in fact, before that, it even left the Natori family. It became to the Yabutani family. But it doesn't matter, because the way Japanese systems work is the head of it would always, the soke, the family head, would always be the Natori person. Even if the head teacher or the head person was a Yabutani, which it was, um, Natori would take precedence. Now, I have tracked down the original family and I have created a great bond with them. And to put your fears at ease, the Natori family themselves have signed a document. It's not official, I don't even need it. But just to make sure I have that wonderful connection with tradition, the family have approved it. And I've not only seen them once or twice, I've seen them multiple times, I've visited them. Uh, the next time I've been invited to their house and I'm going to have dinner with them, uh, all other meetings have been quite formal and in temples and, uh, and in um, public areas um, and uh, function rooms. But this time we, we have made a real good bond and they have watched what I have done with Natoriu and they are extremely happy that it's coming out. Some of One of the family members is considering changing his name back to Natori because unfortunately then the name Natori is left. The, the, the second oldest son of the family is now called Ishigaki because only the female line of Natori lasted up until a generation ago. So Mr Ishigaki has to look after the Natori uh, grave because he is the head of the Natori family. Um, simply because he was the second son and the Natori uh, name had gone because it had been married off of in a female. There was, two, there was only females in one family at the time, which means that the Ishigaki family took control of the Natori family. So it is the Natori family, but they've, he's thinking of changing his name back to Natori, uh, sorry, to Natori, because his grandmother or his mother said, please change your name to Natori. And he was young, he said, I was a young child, and I thought, no, no, no. And they said, Natori is extremely important in Kishu, you must keep the name alive. And he said, no, no, no. And, and of course, now he regrets it very much, but it's hindsight regret, he didn't know. But what I'm trying to say is we have the original family. Not only that, we have the head. Mr. Ishigaki is now the head of the Natori branch because he's the second brother. The oldest Ishigaki takes the Ishigaki family. He takes the Natori family and he is well behind us. He's, he's like, yes, Anthony, let's do this. This is amazing. Let's keep it going. Then, of course, we have the monk. Where Natori died, we found his grave. The monk didn't even know the grave existed. We found his grave and we brought it to them and they're so thrilled now. And Mr. Yamamoto, or Monk Yamamoto, is so, we are, we are so close now, me and Yamamoto-san. It's amazing and he is full behind this. So there's me, the project leader, who's gone to Japan, found all this. There's the monk who's got the death certificates, he's got the grave, he's got the death tablet, he, he's got it up for all the Natori family there. He is mega behind this. He is pro-Natori and a pro-bringing it about. 
then you have the family who are absolutely. So the three of us together have really bonded, brought together solidarity so that you guys can actually, actually have something solid and authentic. There is nothing unauthentic about Nato Ryu. It is purely true. It's a real school. It was under one of the top three families in Japanese history. They are one of the most important families in Japanese history, the Kishu Tokugawa. They supplied pretty much most of the shoguns for all of the Edo period. Think about that. They are the shoguns of Japan. Yeah, the number one head honcho. And Natori Ryu was in their Kishu domain, which is where they came from. And that was one of their head military schools. It is one of the most prestigious samurai schools you could ever want to be in. And you have the original guy who wrote it, obviously adapted it from early Sengoku teachings, but in reality, it was early Edo period when he totally changed it all. And uh, he is the person who has wrote it down, and you can be a member of that. So remember, Natori Masazumi is your master, if you like. We have to pay him respect. If you're a spiritual person, you should have an altar and you should have something that represents Natori. I don't personally mind if it doesn't really follow Japanese convention or whatever, or it doesn't, you know, it's not 100% like there's this sprig of this there and this bit of rice and that water there and, and all this type of thing. I really, really, or there's the incense and the bell and the, you know, whichever one you're doing Shinto and Buddhism or mixing them together. I really, really don't mind. But I do think you should have an altar with something dedicated to Natori. And I have one, I have one. Now, that's up to you how you deal with that, but I would suggest if you know you really want to feel that connection with Natori, make sure you have something in the traditional Japanese theme to connect with him. Remember that you're going to get the Kuden. The Kuden was written down, or 99.999% was written down, and we have it, and you will get it. So it's there, no problem. You will have the teachings of Natori and the teachings of his students. So what you have to do is see Natori Masazumi as your master. You have to see the students as your senior students. So those long dead people who wrote the Kuden, they're your senior students. They're the people you ask advice for. And that advice is all in the Kuden. It's all there for you. And me, you have to see as a project leader or a garden manager, a, a warden of Natoru, to make sure we're all on the right page, to make sure we're going forward and to make sure everything goes together. Now, lastly, about money, is people think I'm trying to make, you know, rape Japanese culture for money. Uh, well, if you've any idea about what it's like being an author, that is absolutely incorrect. It's a struggle financially. Now, I have invested a lot of money in this. And when people say, oh, how much? I would say tens of thousands of pounds, possibly 20 to 25,000 pounds have been invested in these projects, including the Bansen Shu kind of other things. But I would say about 25, maybe, between 20 and 30,000 pounds British sterling has been invested in this. And of course, we get the royalties back. But if you want to know how it works, is for every $10 you spend on my products, or on my stuff, 90%, that's $9, goes to the publisher. 50 cent goes to Yoshie, and 50 cent goes to me. So, so that's how small a proportion we get from it. Myself and Yoshie get $1 in every $10. The people who make the money out of you, the people who make the money out of me, are the publishers. But without those, we couldn't do the project. So we just have to accept that. 90% of the money you pour into Nato Ryu goes to someone else. It's that simple. Therefore, please remember, I have to keep selling books. There is no way Natori Ryu can continue unless I make a profession out of this and I make it work, which is, means I have to do marketing, I have to do, you know, the adverts, the, all the rest of it, I have to sell things. Now I don't do that, I don't charge. There are no fees for being in Natori Ryu, zero. There are none. There are no gradings, so that means no money. I can, I'm not going to make money that way. I, I refuse to do it, even though I'd make a lot of money from that, because that would be pure 100% my money. No, I will not do it. I will not bow to the pressure of cash, so that gradings, which I hate, become part of it. So that doesn't work. So, you know, I am going to, in the future, probably starting in 2015, uh, because there's no annual membership, there's no actual membership, uh, it's just an idea we all get together and become Natoru students. I am going to ask once a year for a donation of both either money 
or a book or both. So what I mean by that is maybe at Christmas time or New Year's, I'm going to ask people if they will donate $10 to uh, the Natori School and one book. And I would like them to write in the book and say, this was donated by to Natori Ryu on such a date, you know, signature. That means I can't steal the book. That means it has to be in my possession, but I'm hopefully one day going to open a library or a place where Natori Ryu students can read. This will be a place, I hope, this is a long-term dream of mine, is to get a building dedicated to the study of Japanese art. But of course that will take a lot of cash. And as I've just explained, we don't get the cash, the publishers get the cash. So what in the future, if we get enough members, we can get a small piece of land with a small dojo on it. And over the years, as people have donated books, I will move those books into the Natoru library and they can be used for Natoru students. So make sure when you donate, you put the name in. Now, the $10, of course, imagine if we had a thousand students uh, giving me $10, that would be $10,000 I could take around, I could put in the bank, I could take it to Japan, I could pay for scrolls, I could get, you know, things done, we could buy armour for the school, we can get a professional video editing system, we could get a prof we could pay for maybe a studio for a few days, you know, there's lots of things that can be done. So. Uh, at the minute, what people don't realise is I am funding everything from studios, trips to Japan. Uh, Yoshie pays for zero. I pay for everything, yet Yoshie gets 50% of all profit. So actually, any profit I get is gone. If you want to know at the moment my financial status, I simply invest every bit I can into Natoru I get the money back, it gets invested back, I get the money back, it goes back. There isn't a profit in that sense. It gets invested back in. You all see me in Japan, you all see me on the Shinkansen bullet train, you see me going all over, that is not free. That is me spending the money you've spent on the book. 90% has gone to the publisher, 5% has gone to Yoshi, and that 5%, the little drips, uh, is me on the train in Japan, you know, spending the cash. So once a year, I'm going to ask for a $10 or more, it's up to you, um, donation. I'm gonna ask for a book, and that's how it will work for money because I do not want it to be this cult. I do not want it to be a money-making scheme. But of course, we have to make enough money to keep going. There's the simple reality. Because obviously people say, oh, we'll give it away for free. And you're like, no, that's impossible. It's not that I wouldn't want to do that. I'd love to do that. But simply, I would never be able to do the work. Who would put food in my mouth, etc. I think we all know, every logical or reasonable person would know that we need to make money in Natoru. And it needs, needs to be enough to support two full-time people, myself and Yoshi. So it would be great if we had 2,000, 4,000 students, given a $10 each, so we could go all over Japan and we could do these things. So my point is, I know I've talked about money a lot, but my point is that it can't be seen as Anthony is trying to come in and take the money and rape Japanese culture and take it. If that was the case, I would do this a very different way. I would go down the grading system, I would um, I would validate all the other schools, I would take, you know, money for this, money for that. Every seminar I've ever done, I have done for free. The only thing that's ever cost is I have said that they have to pay for my flight out there, because then it would be just too expensive. So for money-wise, guys, please be reassured, I am not trying to get your money out of you. I'm simply trying to get enough to proceed. Now, I've talked for quite a while, and this is quite a long video, which I hope you don't mind. Uh, and of course, if you're interested in Notoriu, you, you, you'll do this video, it's not a problem. So let's do a very, very quick roundup. You are not a student of me, I'm not a teacher. I, you are a student of Natori Masazumi. You also have the senior students above you, which are the long dead samurai of Natoru, the, the other masters and the other people who wrote down for us. You don't have to choose schools. You can stay with your school. You simply have to choose, are you actually a Natoru member more or are you, you know, say, Katori Shinto Ryu member more? You then have to choose, are you doing this for uh, education, recreation, or uh, recreation, sorry, or um, for self-improvement, that, that's up to you. So is it LARPing, is it role-playing? That's your choice. And of course, it's not a cult, there is nothing like that. You're simply, we are, we are, we've, we've all got the duty, if you love samurai culture, to, to really push it out there and try and get everybody understanding what the samurai is about. Now, please, 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 
uh, I hope you uh, take all this on board with a, a reasonable mind and I hope it answers some of the questions that have been floating around. I'm sorry that I didn't realise the questions there, but I've had a few people email me saying, people are talking about this, Anthony, can you please make a video on it? So I have done, and I hope you enjoyed it, and please come over to Natoriu Hub, or subscribe here, and keep up to date with us, and above all, just support Natoriu, and support the project, not me, the project. Right guys, thank you very much, goodbye.